Now, judges have been told to consider more lenient sentences for offenders from deprived backgrounds. The Sentencing Council has, for the first time, explained the mitigating factors that include poverty, low educational attainment, experience of discrimination and insecure housing. Uh, well, let's talk to former Metropolitan Police Detective Peter Blexley. Peter, good to see you this morning. Is it not right to look at mitigating factors like these? Judges always have done and they always will do. They do not need it laying out from a body, the Sentencing Council, formed in 2010, which, with this ridiculous set of guidelines, has just shown how unfit for purpose it is. Judges, take these factors into account. This is deeply insulting to anybody who was born into poverty, who was not particularly academic, who went on to make a decent living, uh, contributing to society. And quite frankly, it's just shown that this council that was established in 2010 is not fit for purpose and should be abolished forthwith. And, it, you know, Peter, depending on whatever background you're from, whether that's upper class, whether it's whether you're born into poverty, you should know the difference between right and wrong, surely? Absolutely. And we should all be judged as equals in the eyes of the law. But this just flies in the face of all that. And let's look at the broader picture here. In the UK, sadly, our streets are becoming increasingly lawless. We have an absolute epidemic of shoplifting and assaults on uh, retail staff. There's massive increase in violent crime. Car crime is, is dreadful. Burglary, none of these are being investigated. Nobody's being caught. So on those occasions when people are arrested, charged, put in front of a court and convicted, what, what are people going to do now? They're simply going to say, I came from a tough background, life was hard for me, so please give me a lesser sentence. There are no deterrents these days, which is why, sadly, crime does pay. You say this highlights the need to basically get rid of the sentencing council, but isn't it necessary, Peter? I mean, it's, it, it, to provide those guidelines so that judges up and down the country are, are sentencing in a similar way? It's these guidelines that have led to so many sentences that have had the public and the media up in arms in recent years. This body was only formed 14 years ago. It's not like it's cemented into the very heart and soul of our judiciary. And having been in many, many courts and in front of many, many judges as a witness, I hasten to add, rather than a defendant, I've always uh, erred on the side of trusting the wisdom of judges to come to their decisions. It is judges who hear all the facts of a case and not the sentencing council. So I think this kind of prescriptive uh, instructions that are being handed down are damaging. They tie the hands of judges very often and consequently people do not receive the suitable punishments that they should. Do you fear that this will excuse criminality? Yes, and that's why it's so deeply insulting to people like me who, who, who came from a, a, a rather impoverished background, please forgive me, um, who came from a rather impoverished background, didn't achieve particularly well at school and then went on to live a law-abiding life. It's so, so insulting to people to just say, well, if, you're, if your start in life is difficult, then we'll understand if you go off and have a life of crime. Utterly insulting. Peter, really good to see you this morning. Thanks very much indeed.